Okay. Well, we um, went through St. George from Vegas to go to the Grand Canyon. And um, there's okay. a taco joint right on the border of um, Utah and Nevada. And a friend of ours who spends summers up in Gunny, when he, he's from LA as well. And when he stops, that's where he stops because he loves that taco joint. And we didn't know. We just, that's how far we got and we got hungry. And there you go. Whatever that means, yeah. which is probably absolutely nothing. <laughs> um, so I am, if you're okay with this, recording us because I figured um, maybe um, we can use our chat with the video as sort of the feedback for your team. And then I can just put that video up. So are you okay with that? Yeah, sounds great. No worries. Okay. Um, if you don't like it, I'll, I'll send you a link. And if you don't want me to use it, I won't. So um, you've still got a shot to say, nah, I'm not going to do this. All right. So, so let me share um, my screen with you to begin with, okay? And um, this is where we started. And I just want to um, run through the presentation first. And I'm actually just going to let it run. And maybe you want to take some notes. Um, or questions along okay. the way. Whatever, away we go. How's it going, Great. guys? Um, this is going to be an active participation um, uh, talk, so I grabbed a piece of paper and please pull out a, a pencil as well. My name is Jeff Dodds, um, and I, my name is Ian Howick, and we are here with Monsanto Inc. Uh, I got a question for you guys. What did Martin Luther King Jr., all of the teachers at this school, Alicia Garza and Jay-Z, all have in common? Who's Alicia Garza? Great question. Alicia Garza is uh, the woman who started the Black Lives Matter movement. What did they have in common? Yeah. Uh, they're all hard workers. That's absolutely true. They have worked very hard to get to where, we, where they are today. They're all passionate what they do in that tool. Absolutely. They wouldn't be doing what they're doing if they didn't have passion. They're influential. Perfect. The biggest thing that every single one of those people have in common and every single one of you in this classroom is they all started with a blank piece of paper and a pencil. With a blank piece of paper and a pencil, you can get your voice out to the world. If you do it professionally and correctly, you can achieve anything you want. Every single one of you guys in this room has the ability to live a dream life, to live the life that you desire because of a blank piece of paper and a pencil. What do you guys want to do with your lives? What's your guys' passions? What are you encouraged to do? Yo, I'm going to be like two chains. Two chains, you want to rap? That's awesome, yeah. I'm gonna go into banking. Banking, what does that look like for you? Well, um, I get a nice office uh -huh. and um, a great computer. Like I have a window, yeah. Absolutely. And I just get to talk to nice people. Right, well, the, way, the best way to do that in today's world is to have a professional writing ability. To get your foot in the door, you need to have an email or a cover letter. It's going to be without any grammar mistakes and stuff like that. You need to have the ability to get your voice out, to get your foot in the door for those venues. And for you, there's going to be producers out there that want to hear your music. And the way that you're going to be able to do that is to get them, get your foot in that door with professional writing. With all this being said, um, we have given you three hard skills to make uh, those dreams a reality. All right, guys, so again, my name is Ian Howell. Here at Monsanto is Incorporated. We've come up with three things that we think that you should take into your writing to make yourself not only a better person, but a better all-around writer, business professional, anything you know it's. First one we have is know your purpose. When it comes to knowing your purpose, that can help you feel what you're writing for, why you want to have that job, why you want to get into writing that book, and who you're trying to connect with. Not only that, 
but knowing your purpose helps fuel the people around you to want to read more of what you're writing and want to understand what your purpose is. The second one we have is emotional connection. When it comes to writing, having an emotional connection helps with a lot of different things, such as why that boss should hire you. Why he, when he reads your letter, when he reads your email, why he believes that you should be working at his company because of your emotional connection to that job. And other things to go into such as writing about a movement, writing about an idea, writing about the people around you, writing about why you do what you do and what you believe in. The second one, we, or the third one we have is wording. When it comes to wording, wording is everything. Wording can be the difference between what sets you apart from everyone else. Wording not only helps your writing, but it helps the people reading your writing, helps people that want to know what your movement's about, why you're so emotionally connected, and why your purpose means so much and so, so much to you and why it's going to help you furthermore with your writing. With that being said, with these three skills that we have given you, you can fill your paper with this pencil and achieve your dreams and conquer the world. Thank you. Well, what do you think? You're um, you're um, muted. You've turned your your. There you, there you go. go. What do you think? Yeah, uh, I mean, I definitely think that we um, paced it very well. Just went first half with me, second half with him, and then um, closed with you know back to me with kind of that inspirational close. Um, you know, our biggest goal was to uh, just really um, have a an active conversation with our audience and really engage them instead of just giving them another lecture that I'm sure they've heard a thousand times. Do you um, think you managed that? Um, yeah, I think, I think we did. I agree. Yeah. And we were matching, um, without planning that. So that was nice. <laughs> Other stuff? Um, I think from the last time we, or at my last presentation, um, I really tried to take what you um, gave me to my, when I got nervous, I would put my hand in my pocket. And so I really actively tried to not do that and I achieved uh, that. The only thing that I definitely did um, notice was the pacing um, was a little bit distracting when, um, when Ian was talking, I was kind of pacing a little bit, um, and that was that might have been uh, a little bit distracting. Well, here um, I, I wanted to talk with you about that. Um, first of all, um, using a piece of paper as a way to keep your hands from going in your pocket is really clever, um, I think, because your whole presentation. Um, is around this piece of paper. That's your metaphor that you're starting from, and right. you've got all the and and that's you've got it there all the time. That piece of paper is really important, and at the same time, it serves as a phenomenal prop for you to grab onto something and keep from putting your hands in your pocket. It's really smart. It's a great Thank move, you. right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's let's start let's start it off again. How's it going? I'm gonna put it um just plain um body language. Yeah, I'm I'm moving I'm moving quite a bit. Yeah, um you are right and if we watch it all the way through, we'll see the same thing over and over again. What was that about? Any ideas? Um, I think just because I um, just struggle to sit, sit still to begin with. Uh -huh. um, and just like maybe there's definitely could be some nerves attached to it. Um, and just like maybe a little bit of like 
helping myself kind of have a little bit of rhythm and kind of, uh, yeah, a little bit of rhythm, a little bit of uh, feng shui to my talk instead of just standing there, just, you know, speaking from a pulpit. So, so let me ask you a question. Um, if you can think back to it, were you guys nervous about what you were doing with the presentation? Because you, you went for the whole idea um, of having people in the classroom, you set people up, you had this discussion. So it was a little bit of a play, right? Um, were you a little right. concerned or scared about whether that would work or not? I was just curious. Um, well, I mean, the only thing that in my head I was thinking is that like you, we didn't do or like we were like going against the rules and wasting time by having this fake audience. But other than that, I didn't think that it was too like I, th I thought it would work. Um, and that's why we did it. We all felt really confident about it. I'm glad to hear you say that um, because when I looked at it each time I'm going, I think he's, he, you maybe more than Ian, or at least you showed it with your body is really concerned um, that you are going to, you made a mistake by doing what you did. And I want to say you did not make a mistake at all. I love the fact that you set right. it up that way. I think that was really clever and um, you also executed it very well. And let me tell you how well you executed it. Um, okay. I took on the role of the high school student in there, and my wife obviously took on the role as another high school student. Yours was the only presentation where I was not able to turn on my, um, oh gosh, um, uh, my, my iPhone to play a rap song. <laughs> In all the other presentations I did, just to be a pain in the ass, because a student right. is going to do that. Oh, dude. And then my girlfriend gives me shit for doing that. And we have this interaction in class. I could not get myself to do it. That's how strong your little play was that you guys put together. And I don't mean little in terms of sure, sure. I mean little in terms of short, right? That's, right. How, that's how good it was. And that's how powerful it was. Awesome. Thank you for saying that. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for doing it. It was a, an absolute gas. I mean, I, I absolutely loved it. It was beautiful. So, okay, so then we've got some nerves going on for you because of that. Well, that's understandable. It was a gutsy move, um, sure. and that's scary. Um, right. It was the right move. Um, so that, if you are confident that's going to be okay, um, and that raises a question about the whole presentation. If you're going to go with that, um, at some point, you just got to go all in and say, okay, yeah. we're doing it this way. This is how we want to present to these high school kids. You're setting it up so that there's real high school kids. We're in any presentation that you do that's not a talking head presentation. Once you're in, you're in. And the yeah. only reason you might stop is if somehow you get some kind of indication from your audience that this is really not working, then right. you might need to walk away from it. But once you're in, just say, okay, we're in and, and just let it go. And I know that's hard, Jeff. Um, and it's also um, a, a skill worth learning. Um, sure. and, it's, and it's maybe a confidence question for your whole team. Um, it's hard. Um, that's, and I think that would have helped you pace less. That's yeah. what I guess I'm trying to say. Yeah. The only thing that I was kind of like just nervous about her is just that like you, you would have think or you would have thought that we weren't fulfilling that five minutes up with content, you know, all the content necessary. But like, you were. We, right. We were, um, but like we did it in a, you know, non-traditional fashion. And the only concern I had was that like, yeah, cool. Yeah. It was lovely. Um, last year, final presentation, um, what I had the students do is make a presentation to the chairman of the largest um, oil company in China. And um, most people did the talking head thing and one team um, came up. I don't know. Did I tell you this story yet? No. One team came up. They brought me to the front of the class and they had me sit down and they had one of their team members um, sit down and talk with me. And then on the table in front, they put three different kinds of fruit and a fruit salad. 
and they explained the symbolic importance of each one of the fruits within the Chinese culture and how it related to what they were trying to do in the business that I was running. And each time they got to a point where they created stress because their presentation was about eliminating stress, there was a guy standing behind the table that I would see, and he had this great knife about this long, and he would just go and cut the fruit in half. And then he'd sit back and put the knife behind his back. And he did it with the second one and the third one. And then they got to the fruit salad and he went to cut the fruit salad and he stopped. And they said, but if we combine all these fruits and we create this great melange, we can solve all these problems, blah, blah, blah. And then they gave me the bowl of fruit. And when you present to Chinese, you always want to give them a gift. And so they brought forward the bowl of fruit and they gave it to me, brought me to tears. If you ever want to see that presentation, let me know and I'll give you a link to it. It was okay. powerful. Wow. And I believe if they would have used that presentation in a real life circumstance, um, I believe they would have had a profound effect on the um, chairman of that company. And um, I think, they they were a shoe in for getting the sale that they were looking for. So right. yours is the second team that's done that and taken a chance and thrown something out. I think it's absolutely lovely. Great. Yeah, we we definitely felt confident that we were being you know outside of the box and not just you know because that's what we were basing the whole thing off of is like you know how can us how can we like just relate to these kids that we know nothing about their reality, you know? And at one point, like we throw them out there and ask a few questions. And at the other point, we really do tell them that like every single person in this room started with an empty piece of paper and a pencil, right. no matter what their other scenario was. And um, that transition, um, we're, well, actually let's go back to the video because um, I'm hoping that your team members um, we'll watch this. Um, sure. Uh, no, I don't want that. Where's QuickTime? Come on, don't be shy. It's okay. a bummer that we can't do our final presentations in, in person. Well, so it's going to be even more fun, right? Yeah, right. Okay. Um, here. Whoop, hold on, I'm gonna probably back. Here at Monsanto's Incorporated, we've come up with three things that we think that you should take into your writing. Let me back that up just a bit here. Okay. To make uh, those dreams a reality. So you ended it off with, here's uh, my partner, and my partner's gonna show you how to make those dreams a reality. It's powerful, it's amazing. And now your partner's gonna pick it up and he's going to show you how to do it, right? right? Two very different roles, two very different things. It's amazing, right? And so again, my name is Ian Howard. Here at Monsanto's Incorporated, we've come up with three things that we think that you should take into your writing to make yourself not only a better person, but three better things, which is already, perfect. Writer, business professional, anything you go into. First one we have is know your purpose. When it comes to knowing your purpose, that can help you feel what you're writing for, why you want to have that job, why you want to get into writing that book, and who you're trying to connect with. Not only that, but knowing your purpose helps feel the people around you to want to read more of what you're writing and want to understand what your purpose is. I mean, Ian is being phenomenal here, isn't he? He's, he's talking... Yeah slowly and in small sentences and he's not talking down to us what he's doing is he's making it really easy for us to understand why knowing my purpose is important either professionally or even if i just want to contact somebody and tell them a story or something you're not making any judgments as the professionals why well, you should work for monsanto and put on a suit you're saying writing matters in your life right yeah it's i mean it's amazing you guys did such a great job here um 
I'm going to sort of move forward because I've got to find something to criticize, right? All so, right. Besides the pacing. Well, no. Yeah. Why that boss should hire him. Why he, when he reads your letter, when he reads your email, why he believes that you should be working at Yeah, well, we were practicing it. Um, Ian was going a thousand miles per hour and I just told him to, to take his time and to really be authentic with his words. Why you do what you do and what you believe in. Here it comes. The second one, we, or the third one we had, was word. There you go. That's my, that's the one thing I'm going to say you guys screwed up, um, is using that clicker on the slide. That's the best I got. <laughs> okay. Right? Um, so you brought the wording up first and then you brought the picture of the people. Um, and if you're going to do that, yeah. that's fine, but you've got to stay on top of it. And, and Ian missed that. Well, okay. Right. Next time you'll be perfect. Right. Um, but his sure. painting was very good. Let me, um, I, I want to, okay. Yeah. Let me go on to the end here because I want to keep the timing pencil and achieve your dreams and conquer the world. Thank you. Here we go with the Q and A. 452. Any questions? Yes. Yeah. Um, I like to use um, the fancier script. I don't like the plain script, uh, you know, fonts. Um, is that okay to use that in business communication? Um, I think that would be more of a personal um, kind of desire, but when we want to uh, be pitching ourselves to business and stuff, we usually want to have, you know, either a Times New Roman font or a different font, just so you can get uh, your words out correctly and the formatting of those words really matter. The easier it is to read, the better it is that you'll look and the easier to understand the person to read. So you heard the student who really likes having this artistic stuff going on and you didn't break her heart, right? You said, you know, sometimes life has constraints and that's going to be one of them, you know, it's, uh, we're really sorry, but you understand, right? And she did, right? I mean, you yeah. did a really good job on that. Let's, let's keep going. Great. So like those three things, like I want to be like two chains and Big Sean, 42 Duke. How, how's that going to help you write my stuff? Well, if you look at, you look at two chains, it's right. You went in with so much confidence. Every single so we know what he's going to say later, right? Yeah. Of those rappers got their foot in the door by hustle and determination. And when it comes to the Hollywood and LA, that is what they're gonna look for, as well as being a professional, as well as getting your word out. And all of those raps that you're gonna create, you're gonna need uh, lyric videos and lyric you know, papers that you're gonna give to these producers. And you're gonna to wanna to have to do that professionally. Example of two chains, all he wants for his birthday is a big booty hug. The wording behind that is very simple, but his emotional connection is what draws in the people to listen to his writing and to watch his music and to listen to it too. After that answer, I can okay. Right? I mean, yeah. big booty hug, what more can you say? <laughs> <laughs> it's just absolutely, it's absolutely killer, right? I mean, in the end, yeah. I'm so I glad. Mean, especially for, yeah, it was like, it was funny because I knew that he was wanting to say something too, but he was struggling. So I wanted to pick up his slack and at least say something like credible and professional and then finish it off with the high school, like perfect closure for a high school audience. It was, wasn't it? Um, yeah. and, you, and you did a good job. You, you, you jumped in nicely. Um, but it was like, he's just, I'm, I'm going, what does he really want to say, right? <laughs> go, Come on, tell me, I really want to hear it, right? And um, I, I wanted to hear it too, <laughs> right? Everybody in the room wanted to hear it, right? Yeah. 
because and it was hilarious it was it was beautiful a little tricky to do in a university classroom right oh my god if i say that what are they going on it was lovely again yeah Ian, way to go um well done I'm, I'm glad you brought it out it was worth every every second of it agreed um so um first of all um the let me get a little formal here for because i'm going to stop um taping in a minute um sure the um presentation gets an a plus it was creative it was interesting it showed courage it was well done it was well pointed off uh, pulled off the fact that you had a slight mistake with the um slide i just don't have the heart to take a point off for that i'm sorry um maybe somebody else could but i can't it was really well done i'm glad you guys had the courage to do it it was a fun presentation to be in i felt really drawn into it i can't see a single high school student out there that wouldn't feel exactly the same way and pay full rapt attention to what you guys are doing and in the end that's what you want out of a presentation that's what it's about and the way you guys did it it was just phenomenal so really well done congratulations i'm glad you guys had the courage to do it and yes i did say a plus which comes out to 100 percent um really really well done and now i'm going to stop recording well maybe i should hit